okay now we are going to talk about the auxin signaling pathway so first let's see the key players of auxin signaling pathway and their roles in the process of auxin signaling pathway in any signaling pathway you need to know that there is one ligand which is the signaling molecule and then there is one receptor to bind with and then there is a inhibitor or activator and there is a event of phosphorylation or polyubiquitination in plants we will see a role of polyubiquitination and involvement of 26s proteolytic component so here the key players are auxin acts as a ligand then the receptor of the auxin known as tir1 transport inhibitor response 1 acts as a auxin hormone receptor and this tir1 do not work alone it works with other f box proteins like scf and the scf is associated with skp protein and the culine protein then we have this as i said it is associated with scf protein culine protein but this tir1 acts as a auxin binding receptor also acts as a e3 ligase that can attach polyubiquitin to the target protein for its destruction then comes a regulator particularly inhibitor that is arf aux slash a i a a so think about these terms arf it means auxin response factor the auxin response factor is a transcription factor that actually helps in transcribing the genes necessary uh, in order to provide response against the auxin while aux1 slash iaa is the inhibitor of arf1 when we see arf1 is associated with aux iaa that means the aux ia inhibits the function of arf here then 26 s proteolysis complex as well as ubiquitin now let's look at the cell we have a cytoplasm and we have a nucleus and for every signaling pathway ultimately the, the activation of transcription factors happen and the transcription factor activates a certain response genes in this case auxin response genes or auxin response elements so in nucleus we have the regulatory region and structural genes that will be transcribed into target mRNA and they will be utilized uh, for producing proteins necessary for the cell growth. ARF1 acts as a transcription factor. So ARF comes in and binds to the regulatory region as a result of which the structural genes will be transcribed into uh, specific mRNA and they will be translated into the cytoplasm and then they will make proteins for the auxin response element but what happens when there is no auxin in the environment when the plant does not receive auxin then this arf is inhibited by aux slash iaa inhibitor and at this present moment as the arf is inhibited there is no one to bind to the regulatory region thus no structural gene production no structural gene transcription is possible now let's assume what happened if the auxin is present if the auxin is present then the auxin will be transported into the plant cell and then the receptor is present in the cytoplasm which will bind to the auxin with this tir1 region and upon the auxins binding to the TIR1 receptor, it also activates the F box complex. And as a result, this TIR1 protein gets activated. And as I said, the TIR1 protein is a E3 ligase. So it can start adding the polyubiquitin into the aux slash IAA inhibitor as they attach multiple ubiquitin to the aux slash iaa inhibitor it will destine this aux iaa inhibitor to be degraded using 26s proteolysis complex 
and once the degradation is done the ARF becomes free and now this ARF travels inside the nucleus as the transcription factor binds to the regulatory region and they start transcribing the structural genes structural mRNAs and this mRNA will be transported into the cytoplasm they'll start making proteins which will help the cell to grow and divide which is the traditional trademark response of auxin hormone binding.